Hey guys, what's going on? Megan here, answering three questions about nucleus overload from Joe A. Question number one, how does nucleus overload, hold on a second. Let me... All right. All right, how does nucleus overload impact strength and athletic performance? All right, so again, nucleus overload, obviously it's gonna affect it positively, no question about it, right? Unless you're doing a lot of stretch work, which is completely different from nucleus overload, right? Um, so when I say stretch, I mean weighted stretches. So how is it going to, you know, improve athletic performance? Remember, the, the whole purpose of nucleus overload is to create more nuclei, you know, more satellite cells within the muscle, which is going to lead to more nuclei. More nuclei means you have, you know, more of the machinery that builds protein, right? Which is why you build muscle a lot faster if you go through a nucleus overload phase as opposed to just going straight into a training program. So that's also going to carry over to uh, athletic performance because now you have more nuclei, that's more mitochondria, uh, more capillaries, right? Uh, so more blood transport into the muscle. You're going to have uh, more glycogen storage capabilities in the muscle. So that's going to help, obviously, where, you know, um, the muscle ability to contract and things like that. So from a fundamental and molecular level, of course, you know, you're going to improve a lot of performance. You're using that muscle every day. You're doing the close overload. You're recruiting it every day, but you're not damaging it, you know, with conventional training. So you get, you're get you getting all the benefits, um of, you know, that come with recruiting almost every day, minus the downsides, you know, uh, you know, if you were doing like heavy weighted, you know, stretching type work. So yes, it's definitely going to improve athletic performance. In fact, that's why your body makes those adaptations. You know, body doesn't, remember, your body doesn't know that you're just trying to put on muscle when you train. Your body's just trying to adapt and survive. So, it, you know, it responds to that stimulus by making the activity that you're doing easier. That's why you have to progressively overload because once you, when you train, your body wants to make that activity easier because obviously the first time you do it, it's not easy. Once that activity becomes easier, you plateau because the body doesn't see another reason to grow. And that's why you have to overload so that it goes, oh, fuck, you know, more stress, you know, so let me adapt to that as well. So, yeah, you know, the whole purpose of uh, 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 the adaptation that comes from nucleus overload is, you know, for athletic performance, as you call it. Your body doesn't know the difference, you know, quite frankly, unless you're doing some crazy specialization work where, you know, Focus them on power alpha. But yeah, hope that answers question number one. Question number two, um, will performing NO on a posterior chain, for example, the hamstrings, positively affect athletic performance for a soccer player? Absolutely. Especially because, again, in soccer, you're sprinting a lot. And what are the two most important muscles for sprinting? Most people think quads. No, the two most important muscles for sprinting are your glutes and your hamstrings. Yes, your glutes and your hamstrings. As any... Uh, professional sprinter and they'll let you know you know um, so yes you know doing nucleus overload in your posterior chain is gonna just like I said in, you know in the, in the first when I said the first question it's gonna create a perfect environment for uh, you know increased athletic performance as well as hypertrophy um, let's see last one should beginners be doing nucleus overload absolutely absolutely um, it, it, again remember when I learned when I discovered nucleus overload it was mainly accidental it was from people who were doing this shit by pure accident in the early years you know and they got the most gains when they transition back into when they transition into bodybuilding for the first time so the earlier you do it the better you know because again you lay in the foundation right people forget i don't care how good your training program is it all boils down to the machinery right your enzymes your muscle building enzymes uh the amount of dna and satellite cells in the muscle uh the the amount of blood transport glycogen storage all of those things that's the foundation for a muscular physique or an athletic physique, right? So the earlier you set the foundation, the better. So yeah, I, I recommend beginners to do nucleus overload uh, as soon as you can, you know, for that specific muscle. Or if you want to do it for your entire body, go right ahead. You know, it's just that, you, you know, I, I don't have a lot of uh, I don't have a lot of research showing people who've done it on their entire bodies. Most of the anecdotes and the scientific evidence came from people who experimented on like one muscle in particular. But, it, you know, it'll still work for your entire body as long as your nutrition and your recovery is on point. All right, so I hope that answers those three questions on the Clues Overload. If you have more questions, comment below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.